Howdy, everybody. Howdy and hello. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to do a cigar review live. Live with whoever chooses to show up. If we're looking, the cigar, make sure we can get it in here. That will say Discovery 750 Limitada Lot Number 98 Series A. And it is a Let's see if we can't bring that in a little bit. Yeah, it's just not going to do it. All right, so it's a Monte Cristo. I would say it is most likely a Connecticut. Uh, because it's sold in America, you get... Hey, look, the one thing that shows up clear. And it says cigar smoking can cause you all kinds of stupid shit. You know what? Oh well. Alright, so it comes in a glass tube. Uh, I actually know the guy who owns Discovery Cigars. Good guy. Sat down, had a few cigars with him. Okay. So you peel this first label off and the second one <clears throat> now the cool thing about knowing a guy who actually has a business with cigars is that sometimes he'll hook you up okay yes that's actually glass that's not that's not plastic. Now, pipe smokers. Seriously. Right now. Don't throw this out. Are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? Perfectly clean glass tube. With a decent seal. What you have here is a small carry pack for several bowls worth of pipe tobacco. Now, any of y'all females out there, you, you've uh, worked as a waitress of, at some sleazy-ish type bar and they've given you the shotgun bandolero, you can go make every man happy in the world by buying enough of these in cigars and you stick them in that bandolero, you walk around with them, you can sell those suckers because they'll be smoking hot and so will you. Ah, hey, wait, didn't I say already that this channel is not for people under 21 and not for anybody who's easily offended? Well... If you've got a problem, check it at the door. If you check it at that door, you're checking it at the wrong door. All right. So it comes with a... It's actually a fake foil. And as we... Oh, look at there. Ah. Have you ever been to a cigar shop? If you've never been to a cigar shop, I'm gonna tell you that that smell of a fresh premium cigar is phenomenal. Now, anytime you buy a cigar in a tube, I'm gonna make this suggestion to you. 
you look over the end piece that you're about to light really, really well. If the cigar was placed in to that tube and it was still moist, you could be looking at mold. You'll see the mold right there if it's there. I always look mine over a lot. Now I've never had any problems with this particular guy. He ta he brings his cigars in and quite literally he puts them in a humidor and he lets them sit in that humidor until they've gotten a certain amount of time on them. That's when he puts on the extra wrapper and stores them in the tube. I've asked him about it. At least this is what he says he does. Added expense. He passes that on to the customer. Or the other option that he said he does is he has it done at the factory. The problem with the ones done at the factory is sometimes you will end up with just that little touch of mold. Again, it depends upon what the weather conditions were if it's done at the factory. If it's done by a private seller, they have to have a little bit more control because their name is also on the cigar. Look, I've been to some great cigar places and still gotten crap cigars because they weren't stored and kept right. It happens. Now, I am, as per my norm, going to cut this with a knife. Now, I'm going to tell you that I keep this knife blisteringly sharp if your cigar cutting knife is not really really going to cut fine hairs on your arm and yes I did say fine hairs on my arm <laughs> you ain't got it sharp you're going to butcher your cigar I could have used a punch, probably should have used a punch. Nice cap on it. Okay. So the cap is a one, two, three, four, five. That's a five wrap cap. So it's obviously not Cuban. <clears throat> the cigar is. Let's call it seven and a half, maybe eight inches. <sighs> There's just something about a cigar that you just gotta love. If you like cigars. If you don't like cigars, there's not much I can say about it. Oh, by the way, I got to make sure to do this. Howdy. 
obviously, I'm going to be missing on Thursday. <clears throat> For anybody who's concerned on whether I'm going to be tailgating on Thursday or not, yes, I'm probably going to miss on Thursday. I will be hanging out with my family, <clears throat> enjoying ham and turkey and stuffing and squash and potatoes and, 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 oh my God, it's going to be so much fun, so tasty, so good. My wife is a great cook, so I don't have any worries there. And I'm decent, so I have no decent worries there either. <clears throat> now, if you don't know anything else about cigars, I'm going to tell you right now. Pull a, pull a cold draw. What a cold draw is. No flame. You haven't lit it yet. Just pull the air through. You get two things out of a cold draw. It's not too late to fix either one of them. First is, do you even like the flavors that pull through? Like right now, I catch hay. little bit of cedar. No peppers, but maybe just a, just a, of some creaminess. The other thing that I can tell is that I have fully opened up the cigar. Now, that looks a little weird for some. The cut is slightly egg-shaped. Yeah. But I haven't destroyed the cap. I'm able to get a full draw out. What more do I need? What do I mean by a full draw? Does it feel plugged? Does it feel like there's an obstruction somewhere in the cigar? This is a great chance if you need it to take a long wire and poke through from both ends, you know, and possibly eliminate that little blockage can happen in the blink of an eye, can be on any cigar. Uh, it's hard to regulate those little things that could possibly happen. But it's easy to fix. You just got to know how. I don't have to because this one's plenty good. The reason you want to check that is because it's way easier to fix it before it's lit. If it's plugged, you can't get any kind of real airflow through it. It's not going to smoke good. It'll smolder, but it won't smoke good. So what you want is you want enough air to come through that it's it's thicker than drinking a soda through a straw, but it's thinner than drinking a milkshake through a straw. Unless, of course, it's like the end of a milkshake and you're like, okay, well, I'm just finishing this bad boy off. If it's too thick, you're not going to get anything through it. That's when you know it's plugged. If it's too thin, not really too much you can do about it at this stage. But at that point, look at your hole or your cut 
and decide that that's too much for this particular cigar, remember that, write it down somewhere, and when you get that cigar again, if you get that cigar again, go through your list. It's okay to sit there and take notes on cigars. Please, take notes on cigars. The more notes you take, the easier it is to figure out what you like. I like almost all cigars, so it's pretty easy for me to figure it out. Is it cigar shaped? Is it not infused? I'm probably going to like it. I even do like a few of the infused ones, but that's just a different story. Hi. Howdy. Y'all doing all right today? Beautiful, yes. Oh, yeah. Loving this weather. Yep, you too. Be polite to your neighbors. Oh, by the way, my neighbors recently came walking down and they were saying how somebody was trying to borrow their ladder that doesn't live in this neighborhood. So now we're all watching for this same particular person. Is he casing the neighborhood? Is he looking to steal some stuff? It's just some jackass that doesn't know where he is. Well, anyways. Enough about that. Let's get back to that cigar. Go for the light. What you want to do is you want to get the flame to heat evenly this whole surface. Not the surface where you're going to pull in from. So not the surface by the band, but the surface by the other end. You want to work that around in a circle. The easiest way for me is to use the lighter and to slowly rotate the cigar. Some people will not rotate, some people will. I've found my technique, you find yours. If my technique is yours, more power to you. And here's how I do it. Now when you get done, face it towards you. And just lightly blow on the end of it. You'll be able to see, did I get it right? If you didn't, you could touch it up pretty quick. Anyways, it'll keep you from looking like a noob at the very, very first of a couple of puffs or so if you're in a lounge. Howdy, Greg. How you doing today? Okay. From that point there, take a few puffs. You're going to find that the flavors have changed. Where I was getting hay before. Oh yeah, I'm doing fine, Greg. How about you? Oh, I'm... Okay, I see it. The wording, which is right over here on my screen, uh, when it gets up just past a certain point, it goes past the red and gray of my sleeve or the red of the door and the gray on my sleeve. And it gets up to that window and I can't see it when it's on the window. <laughs> no big deal. Just explaining why I sometimes miss some things and have to look way in. Um, but yeah. Smoking a big hog leg of a cigar. It's a Monte Cristo decent. So, you get that first couple of puffs in, and you'll start noticing some flavors have changed, like I was saying. On the cold draw, 
I was tasting hay. And the hay is diminished. The cedar has come more forward. And if you'll remember, I said no pepper at all. But there's like a fine dusting of some white pepper. And there is a difference between white, red, green, and black peppers. Uh, white is the most mild form. I don't know why. Don't ask me to explain why white pepper is the most mild. Uh, there are some people out there that will be able to explain it. But by mild, I mean it doesn't have that, that strong peppery bite. You'll taste a pepper, but it, it's not going to heat up your mouth. You're not going to go, oh my, wait a second. That's pepper. No, you're just going to be like, oh, that, that's... I, I taste something. It's there. And by pepper, what I mean is peppercorn. Let's not start thinking jalapeno and serranos and Carolina Reapers and various other peppers. No, I'm talking about the pepper you would use to season food on a regular basis, or at least most people would. Well, Greg, um, impossible mission force right here, baby. You like pipes. So, let's start with you do like tobacco. Okay. Once we get past the you like tobacco stage, you like aromatics. Okay. What are your favored aromatics? Are they cherry, uh, vanilla, coffee, uh, would you like chocolate or, or do you want something that's just way off but as long as it's an aromatic you'll like uh, do you need it to be sweet these are all things i can help you find if you like things that taste of certain alcohol i can teach you how to do it Okay, you're into heavy Cavendish, all right, and you like sweet. Okay. There is a company called Drew Estates. Okay. They own a label called Deadwood. Think Old Western. And the Deadwood label covers four that I know of. But you would want to try something between Crazy Alice and Fat Bottom Betty. Sounds like I'm talking craziness here. Crazy Alice is a very small pyramid-shaped cigar. They are sweet. There is no way that you can say they are not sweet. You will definitely understand sweet. Um... I'm trying to remember the one in the middle. 
and it was Crazy Alice and Fat Bottom Betty. All right, well, anyways, there's three of them right there in between. And the one I wouldn't turn you on to is their uh, less popular Kentucky Fire Cured Cousin. So that's going to be Latakia-ish. Which, for some people, is just, it's, it's too smoky. Now, it's Jane something or other. Crazy Alice, Fat Bottom Betty. So I think it's Sweet Jane. But don't get me to quote that. They are by Drew Estates. You can look them up online. I know that you should be able to find them on Cigar International or JR Cigars. Um, as far as them getting to you, I'm not sure if you're... Because I'm not sure exactly the location where you live. So I can't guarantee you that the state where you live is going to allow you to receive them. But if you want a good, great construction, damn fine smoke, that is sweet, that's what I've put you on to right now. Um, oh, if you're in North Carolina, shoot, you might as well just walk there. <laughs> All right, maybe not walk. Um, the other one that I'm going to suggest you try specifically, um, also by Drew Estates, get the Cuba Deluxe. That would be K-U-B-A Deluxe. It comes in a tube. One of the best things about it is, if you like the cigar that comes out of it, there is a little plug in this section. You take that plug, you cut it a few times after you stuff it down in your pipe, and you get to smoke that same flavor again, but this time through your pipe. It's an interesting way to get two smokes out of one cigar. Howdy Todd, good to see you today. So I'm moving down a little bit through my cigar. As we can see, extremely good construction. I'm not even really working on it like I would be, but look, that ash is not moving the rings are ideal the flavor is a little bit touchy for me um, have you ever been out and you've mowed a lawn or you've been trimming trees and you know that slightly copperish taste uh, some of us were really into sports and that overexertion. I'm catching just a little touch of that on this cigar. Um, not that it's right or wrong, just saying that I'm, I'm, I'm getting this little touch of that. And that, it, it puts me off a little bit. And then there's kids that go screaming up and down the street. And I'm just wondering, where are your parents? Okay. 
Yeah, because if those were my kids, oh, they'd be done all right. Oh no, you can you can scream your full head off in the backyard. But out in the front yard, no, that was not an acceptable thing, at least not when I was growing up. So Todd, how are you about cigars? Got any cigars you like, or is this a uh, sportsman? No, I don't believe so. Uh, is that a cigar or a pipe blend, Todd? No, I will be just as honest as I can be. I have not tried every brand and every maker of cigar. I have tried a mighty large selection of cigars. And I have tried fewer pipe blends than I have cigars. But I was into cigars way, way previous of being into pipe blends. Then no, I don't believe I've had sportsmen. No, I can't, can't think that I have. So, Greg, uh, one of the other ones to possibly look for, now, this is not one that I suggest a lot of, uh, but on occasion, when the Hooters that's closest to my house used to allow interior smoking and I could view a uh, UFC fight at the same time I would get the Tatiana vanilla because the girls all said it smelled like spray tan so nobody was choking and nobody was complaining Now, because of that statement, my wife, when she has those situations where we have to go to a, basically a dinner or party or whatever for important clients, if I'm invited and going, then I will take a couple of the Tatiana. I look for the fatter ones. There's two different sizes. One's really skinny like a Lancero. The other one's a little fatter like a Robusto. Um, so I'll look for the fatter one and I'll take it with me. Because I'm not in her business and I don't know enough about her business to actually follow along with the conversation I will sit back to the side and be a wallflower and I'm okay with that but almost always I get left with somebody that either knows everything about everything or is just so annoying to me that my normal reaction would be to just go ahead and drop them like a rock. <clears throat> you can't really do that. Polite society and all. So I'll take a selection of cigars, leave my selection of cigars in the car, and bring in a couple of those vanilla sticks and 
if this dude is really starting to annoy me, I will go way over to the side somewhere. And I'll light one of those vanilla sticks and I will basically blow it straight at him. It's not horrible, but it's not an enjoyable sensation. Normally, they'll take the hint, they'll leave me alone. Okay, I'm good. If they still won't leave me alone, and I've finished smoking that cigar, I will make sure to make a loop somewhere where my wife will see that I have smoked the first cigar. And then I will make a big enough production of lighting the second cigar. I haven't, I haven't walked up to my wife. I haven't discussed my displeasure with being stuck with people I can't stand. I've been polite. I've been off to the side, somewhere far away from anybody. But now I've gotten to the point where, babe, I finished this cigar. I'm leaving. She knows the signs. She now knows she has 35, 40 minutes to go shake hands and make nice and come up with some BS reason why we gotta leave. Because she knows she doesn't want me to go bunkers on the whoever it is. The whole time. I haven't done anything bad. I haven't pissed anybody off. I've given all the signs of just leave me alone. <coughs> some people can take the hint, some people can't. But if your wife suddenly shows up as you're putting out your second cigar and says, babe, we gotta go. Again, you can say, hey, see you again sometime, and you're out of there. Now the advantage. Remember, I said, I will leave some cigars in a travel humidor in the car. Somebody walks up and starts talking to me about cigars and they're actually knowledgeable and comfortable to talk to I can always toss one of those vanilla sticks be like you know what I'll be right back let me show you what I really got at that point what I do is I go past her and tell her hey I've got to go to the car for a little bit can you order me can you get me a bourbon she knows that means we're here this is going beautifully you have all the time in the world I'm gonna have my one bourbon and a cigar and I'm gonna be someplace where you can find me talking comfortably with someone who shares my interests. Either way, one person smoking a cigar by themselves is, as long as they're off to the side and not trying to be in the middle of everything, it's obnoxious, but it's, it's acceptable. Two or three or more people off to the side enjoying some drinks and cigars? 
It has now become completely acceptable, not obnoxious at all. We are guys. We are doing something we wanted to do anyways. We just happen to be at this location, and we are respecting everybody else's wishes. We will normally go so that we are the most downwind, so that our cigar smoke doesn't tend to float right across everybody. It's already way over here and going that way anyways. There's ways to set it all up. And sometimes previous planning is the best part. So when you go to an event, remember, two vanilla sticks, small, throw outable, doesn't matter. And a couple of better sticks tucked in a travel humidor somewhere in the car. You don't have to bring out the whole box with you when you first get there. Plus, you don't really want to offer one of these great sticks to somebody who's going to think that that vanilla stick smells great. They have to be right up in your face and talk to you about it. Unless, of course, they are proving that they know a little bit about cigars, and then you can be like, hey, well, let's sit over here and talk about cigars like, like men. Let's get a bourbon and, or a scotch or... You know, if beer's your thing, get beer. Uh, if you don't drink, uh, get whatever you like. I would bourbon up myself, but that's me. Speaking of bourbons, um, any of the bourbons that would catch a little bit of an extra vanilla... Now, I'm not saying you've added vanilla to the bourbon. I'm talking about actual vanilla notes that are in the bourbon. Uh, most bourbons will have a touch of vanilla, uh, the, the maybe, maybe some cocoa, uh, a caramel. These are things that are common. Um... You could go with something that's got some pepper, but not necessarily because it's going to overpower the cigar. Now, it's light enough that a cup of coffee or uh, a nice cup of tea or something like that would, would be completely acceptable. By the way, this cigar was only $12. Only $12. For some people, that's a lot. Uh, per cigar, it's not really that bad. Okay, about a third of the way in, and I'm starting to taste hints of leather. Which is really nice. Now, here's the thing. A cigar will go through some flavor changes as it burns. Um, very rarely, except for in the infused ones, do you end up with the same note all the way through. Um, none of my favorite ones do anything less than three changes. Four, if you include the cold draw. One of the best parts about doing the cold draw ahead of time is you start noticing, hey, I know if it's got this for a cold draw, I'm probably going to like it. It'll save you a lot of time because you get through a third of the cigar and you still don't like it. You're probably not going to like any of it.
but knowing the cold draw can help you talk with a tobacconist about what you're looking for in your cigars. Also, knowing your flavor profile. Now I'm going to suggest this to everybody. Your flavor profile is not going to change a lot all at once. If you like aromatics, you're going to like aromatics. If you like straight cigars, you're going to like straight cigars. But there's various spots in that range that are going to completely destroy you or completely be perfect for you. If you walk into a tobacconist and you say, man, I'm looking for a new cigar. What I really like is leather and cocoa. Or I like pepper and hay. Or do you got anything that's see now this is gonna this is gonna show off on me. Do you have anything that's got a smoothness like a creamy cocoa but it's peppery now if you're at a place and they can't steer you towards a cigar and you've given them peppery and a smooth then they probably don't know anything about their cigars if you're at a place you've asked for that they should be able to turn you on to about five cigars that I could think of just right off the top of my head these are things if you know what you like howdy Mark how's it going today So these are things that if you know what you like about a cigar, you can tell a tobacconist, this is what I like. Even if it's a place that you've never been to and they don't have your favorite cigar, they should be able to say, oh, okay, well, we've got this. It's going to fall in that very various different range. Um, it's going to be more to this side or this side of what you're looking for, but it's going to be close. A decent tobacconist should be able to at least get you close. Perfect? Perfect. You're going to have to go back and see that guy about five or six times. But you're never going to go see him again if he screws it up the first time. Trust me on that one. I mean, if you walked in and you said, mm, well, these are the cigars I like. Let's say your name off, uh, well, let's just go with some of my list. Alec Bradley Black Market. Um, the... A.J. Fernandez Sun Grown Rosado. The Monte Cristo Afrique. Or Afrique. Trust me, if you see the name Afrique, you'll understand why I called it that. Uh... Roma Craft, Neanderthal, and let's go for one more. What? Let's see. What? What can we throw in there just to make sure that we get something nice and interesting? Um, La Mission. Five cigars I like. Okay. 
if I can tell if I could tell that list to a decent tobacconist, but they don't have none of those on the shelf, but they've heard of them. They should know. Okay, this guy likes dark cigars. He likes hints of leather. He likes little freckle of cocoa. That peppery bite. These are things that I can and then he should be able to say, hey, well, look, this one's got this, this one's got that, this is a little closer to what you're wanting as far as what my shop has. Now, quite honestly, very few places there are going to have the uh, Fuente Rosado. You find a place that has the Fuente Triple Eight Rosado. No, sorry, the Eight Five Eight Rosado. Sun Grown Rosado. Psh, buy all of them. Just take them home. You can make more money on the free market than he can selling them right there. Oh, and I didn't mention a cigar that's going to cost more than $15. Period. Didn't do it. Not going to try and get you a cigar that's going to break your budget. Howdy, Boris. I am probably going to mangle that word. Tervetis? I'm hoping that's Tervetis. Welcome, Boris. Glad to see you today. Long time, in fact. In case anybody's wondering, no, I will not be doing a tailgate on Thursday. I will be enjoying that time with my mom and, or, well, with my mother-in-law and my wife and, and, ah, that's unformal hello. Well, howdy, sir. How you doing today? Yes, I can throw that southern accent in there pretty darn well. Maybe it's because I grew up around it. In case you're wondering what's in the cup, it is quite literally just water. Now, truly a truthful statement, secret to enjoying a cigar consistently. Don't drink bourbon or scotch or whiskeys or any kind of alcohol with your cigar before you know your cigar water and people look at me like I'm crazy when I say just water you want a clean palate you want to be able to know what your cigar tastes like do you actually enjoy that cigar or are you just really enjoying the bourbon there's nothing wrong with really enjoying the bourbon there's nothing wrong with really enjoying scotch or vodka or whatever it is you choose to drink but truly enjoying your cigar being able to say you know what I enjoy this cigar whether I have that drink or not it is it's more true to you yourself as the consumer be able to say no I honestly enjoy that cigar
people ask me all the time, well, why do I like the Alec Bradley black market? It's the first cigar I actually really can say that I truly enjoyed. I mean, I'd smoke them from time to time. But after the, after the Alec Bradley Black Market came out, I was like, this isn't going to be just once in a while. This is going to be whenever I got a shot at having a good cigar. That's what I'm going to have. From there, I branched out. But it took some, it took some people explaining to me, hey, look, give this one a shot. Okay, I will. Uh, don't get me wrong. I had had a few Cubans, uh, such as my favorite being the the Hoyo de Monterey Epicure Number no. Two. I'd had that before I had the Alec Bradley Black Market, but I couldn't get it here in the states, so it really wasn't a favorite. Because a favorite should be something that you can enjoy all the time. Something that's readily available. And because the United States still doesn't allow importing cigars from Cuba, which is, in my opinion, asinine. My belief is and this is just me. You can believe any way you want to. You don't have to listen to me on this. But if you're getting a cigar and you can't get it hardly ever, except for when someone brings one to you, it can be a favorite, but it's your occasional favorite. Your real favorite is that one that you're like, man, this is the old friend. I don't even have to think about it. I just grab this one off the shelf and I'll look around. I'll pick up another cigar or two. But I'm getting this one for certain. That's really what your favorite is. Just finished that Camacho Nicaragua. All right. Liked it quite a lot. Peppers from the start. Okay, that's from the Dominican. Uh, kind of sweet. Cinnamon in the middle and black coffee near the end. Now I'm curious to see if I can get another one. And I'm hoping that that's not just what they sent to uh, Finland or actually Camacho would first send it to uh... Oh God, where's Davidoff out of? Sweden? Switzerland? I know it's not France, because that'd be S.T. DuPont. Oh, yeah, but Boris, whatever your... I mean, your description of that cigar really has me interested, because... I like a good peppery stick. Uh, that little bit of cinnamon, that's a little off. But if it's got coffee and peppers, then I'm pretty good at it. Okay, so, Todd, different pipes will bring forward different flavors. What I mean by forward You'll have, almost every tobacco will have three or four flavors in there. The forward flavor is what you're really, really tasting all the time. Um, that's why when I do a review, I review in a briar a cob, a meerschaum, 
and a clay. All four of them will bring forward a little bit of a different flavor and the size of the bowl will help me narrow down is this really a big bowl blend or is this a small bowl blend? Is this a sipper blend or a huffer blend? Uh, and finding what's right for you you really, it takes a while and, and dialing it in to get it just right is uh, it just really hard. Okay, so barnyard and leather all the way. Okay, so sounds good. And citrus. Okay, but you get citrus with almost any tobacco. Alright, that's that's understandable. Especially, especially things that come out of South America where there is a lot of citrus that comes out of South America. A good portion of the world's citrus crops realistically do come out of South America. Uh, not everybody believes me on this, but yes, they're shipping their citrus to everywhere. Uh, depending upon how close field A is to field B, Field A being tobacco, field B being citrus, you will get some crossover. It's uh, it's inevitable. Uh, the pollinating bugs, which let's all remind ourselves, yes, bees are bugs, uh, but other insects do it as well. They don't just stop at flower A because that's what they're looking for. They go from flower A to flower B to flower C and if if it's within 20 yards they can easily cross that distance because they're trying to load up on what they're looking for in a food source. So, almost every flying insect is a pollination machine of some sort. Um, unless, of course, it's the insect eating plants and then it's a food source. I highly respect plants that eat insects. Not a problem, Todd. I am willing to help you with any questions you have on tobacco. Uh, and trying to explain it perfectly is not always going to happen. What I suggest is getting the cheapest small notebook that you can and you make notes make notes for yourself like okay I liked this this and this about this blend I did not like this this and this or same thing with cigars you write it down eventually you will start seeing your own pattern developing and as you develop that pattern, you will be able to narrow that down to a laser focus. And you will find that you can find which pipe blend or which cigar is just absolutely perfect for you. Uh, a good tobacconist can help a great tobacconist can really really dial it in a lot faster than you can just by being able to say hey I liked this blend this is what I liked about this blend from those two statements a great tobacconist should be able to say okay so you like this kind of tobacco and you like it in this kind of age and you like it with so I'm just going to go just strictly cigar speak real quick 
you like these fillers from this general area and you like these binders from this general area and you like this type of wrapper from this general area okay I can put five cigars at you that are like that and because of those flavor notes I should be able to give you one crossover to a different regional <clears throat> If I hit on four of those, it's because you told me what you liked. If I miss on the fifth one, but you're still okay with it, it's because I know what I'm doing. It's actually not that easy of a job trying to come up with somebody's perfect cigar because my taste buds are not yours. If my taste bud, if I could physically taste what you're tasting and the pleasure centers of my brain could physically say, oh yeah, this is, then I would be able to dial in exactly what you're wanting. Okay. So, do the notebook. You take that notebook and you will ask me a couple of questions every time you catch me on a live, especially if I'm here. Right here, perfect setting for that. But if you have a question for me and we're on, we're on over a pipe, letter rip show I will be happy to try and give you a quick answer I mean I'm not gonna try and hotwire Martin's whole live stream just to do that for you but also Chad or Mike at Briar Blues or any of the other ones but remember if you're asking a really truly detailed question I'm going to say hey look I need to actually kind of more discuss that with you uh, and then because it's me and I know how I am I'm gonna think about it and I'm gonna say hey look my next live uh, this one it's gonna be and, and I can put that in somebody else's chat I don't mind saying my next live this is what it's gonna be uh, let's talk cigars or let's talk pipe tobacco blending and see what we can do about trying to narrow down your your search. Right, right. See, and Boris has got this correct. If your palette was mine, there would realistically only be six cigars on the market. There's thousands. And some of them I will never smoke again and I will happily say that, but I'm not gonna tell you which cigars those are because somebody put a lot of work into getting those cigars on market. Right, and see, that's another issue. Certain countries do not have certain products on a regular basis. Um, molasses. Uh, the only way I know of for Boris to try molasses is going to be for him to come to the United States. Because I'm not even sure if it's available in most of Europe. And from what he's saying, it's not available in Finland at all. Now, you will find molasses mostly in farming and cattle communities. It is more prevalent to find it there than anywhere else in the world. So if you're not truly in a farming or cattle community, 
molasses gets a little more difficult to find. And trying to trying to just tell you what you should be tasting if you haven't tasted that specific product is well I mean it's useless I for instance Boris please tell me some dish that is local to your area that you are fairly certain Americans have not tried <clears throat> And yeah, because I'm going to not know anything about what it tastes like. So he can tell me about it all day long. And I'm still going to be like, man, I, because it's me, I would try it. I personally would try it. Somebody says, hey, look, let's, let's go eat this. Let's go. I've never had it before. Let's do it. And after the first bite, if I don't want it anymore, well, I'll know. And then I'll know not to ever trust that person again, but that's a different story. Like, I will give this a, for example, I like sushi. I do not like eel. I have tried eel in every possible way, shape, form that is sushi, and I just don't like it. The flavor is just not suited to my taste buds, and it's okay. I've eaten it, but then I went and started looking, and I said, hey, I know what eel looks like now, and so I don't get that. Kirk, Kirk Maxson from Florida. How are you today? Me, I'm enjoying a cigar and having a nice chat with Todd and Boris and uh, Mark from Tobacco Pipes International was on earlier. He might still be here. Uh, I'm not saying that he's gone, but I haven't seen him comment in a while. Me, personally, I'm doing excellent. It is a great day for it. A little bit cool outside. Uh, raining a little bit, which is why I'm here instead of in the backyard. Old Dark Fired Rowdy Rubbed. So, okay, I'm catching another flavor change here. <clears throat> Every time I catch a flavor change, I go back to the water and see was I really tasting that or was just the smoke getting stale? So it was a flavor change. Okay, it's kind of coming back to hay and Boris, that citrus that you've said that you taste, uh, I'm picking up a citrus now. Um, it's, it's not super strong though. It, it's like... Uh,
Oh, see, now, dark sourdough rye bread, as long as it's not seeded rye, oh my god, I would tear that up. Whether it came in rounds or, or loaves or whatever, uh, that's, that's something that I, I would definitely want to give a shot. Yeah, I'm I'm right with uh, Kirk on that. The old dark fired ready rub and uh, Todd, I, I agree with you. Um, that's some good stuff. I don't have it very often. Uh, price tag, but when I do have some, I I. I dole it out to myself very sparingly and I don't just load it all up all at once. Unlike a cigar where once you light it, you smoke it. Now I'm going to remind y'all, if you smoke hot and you try to smoke that way on a cigar, I'm going to remind you that smoking a cigar hard and hot is going to create other flavors and some that are not intended. All the cigar manufacturers agree a cigar is not something that you're supposed to rush. Have you seen me just huffing on this thing? No. You've seen me doing almost exactly as the cigar maker intended. They want you to smoke a little bit and then smoke a little bit and then smoke a little bit. They don't want you to just keep smoking. And that's just the truth about cigars. Okay, so I'm going to order me 10 ounces pipe cigars. Ready, Rob? Uh, pipe cigars. Now, if you're looking for pipe blends that have cigar leaf in them, um, there are several. And, okay, so you don't notice any change when you're smoking a cigar. Except for when you get down to the nub and that gets peppery. Okay. Um, we need to find you some other cigars so that I can see what it is that you're uh, actually smoking. That's how I am with the bold Kentucky and the Brisca. I smoke once in a while. Okay, right, right. So, you, so Todd actually tends to like a lot of Kia blend. All right, real quick, I'm also going to explain one simple thing. Pipe smokers understand. Burly means it's going to be strong. Perique means it's going to be strong. Those are the nicotine values. Well, I'm not a Finn expatriate, but a sourdough dark sourdough, uh, I'm good. Now, if it's, like I said, if it's a seeded rye, I'm out. I don't like the caraway seeds, but if it's a not seeded rye, I'm I'm good with that, because that's like the perfect bread to go on a Reuben, and that's probably my favorite sandwich of all time. Which is, 
a Russian dressing, coleslaw, and corned beef or pastrami, uh, depending upon where you're at. With Swiss cheese on a nice dark bread. Okay, sorry, I'm having to move around to... Ah, pirate cake. Honestly, I am really good with pirate cake. I'm better with pirate cake than I am with Haunted Bookshop. Howdy, Mark. Glad to have you back. <laughs> uh, sorry that your phone's off for the night. Hopefully no calls from Ed McMahon show up saying that you won the Publisher's Clearinghouse. <laughs> but yeah, the easiest way to describe cigar blends and pipe blends is to kind of collate them with what you would taste if you were eating this normal food. And uh, depending upon the region, you, you, can't, you can't expect that everybody's going to be able to say, oh yeah, I've had that. Um, well, sorry, Mark. It's not my fault. I didn't sign you up for Ed McMahon's Publishers Clearinghouse big check, but... It's not my fault. Hey, I didn't sign myself up either. My wife took care of that. But yeah, so... With cigars, you want a nice and easy smoke. You don't want too much resistance, but you don't want it so airy that you have zero resistance. Each pull should produce some heat, but you don't want so much heat that you actually sour the cigar. Okay, so if Boris doesn't like pirate cake, I'm guessing that he does not much care for Latakia heavy or forward blends. That's not to say that he won't like an English which has Latakia in it, but to throw 30% Latakia in something is going to be too much. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that that was supposed to be You've Tried Haunted Bookshop. Uh, it came through garbled, but that's okay. I understand exactly what it says. And See, I agree with you. I, I find that Bookshop is a bit too strong for me. But I've had other things that should be just as strong, and it's not. And for me, I think it's, it's, the, uh, it's the specific blend of burley that is used. Uh, it reacts with me poorly. And I feel like my head's spinning when I'm done. And I am catching some slight Latakia notes now. Um, in case you're wondering why I would say a Latakia, well, it's because I'm talking to pipe smokers 
Whereas, if I'm not talking to pipe smokers, I would say, okay, I'm, I'm catching some notes like uh, a barbecue or a campfire. And I would try to try to steer your thinking towards those thoughts and notes. Uh, now, if you smoke a pipe and a cigar, uh, it's a whole lot easier to explain a cigar and a pipe. But trying to do it to someone who's never had one or the other, then it's, it's pretty difficult. Oh, pirate cake is a little too strong for you. Okay, um, well, it's very possible that you're also not into, um, a lot of Kia forward blends. Uh, I know that pirate cake is a very, a lot of Kia forward blend. I'm not sure how much, but it's, uh, okay, so Haunted Bookshop and pirate cake are almost the same blend except for one is Burley and the other is Latakia. Uh, when they add a certain amount past one or the other you get one or the other. Right. Okay. So I mean, just by descriptions of what y'all are giving me, you can see I don't have to be a know-it-all expert, but I understand what you're saying, and I understand it enough to say, okay, this right here might be where your issue is. Um course it's my channel and I, I can speak it much faster than I can type it so uh, it's a little easier for me to answer or to analyze and to give possible answers okay so a vapor is a Virginia and Perique Perique is actually a burley, but the processing of it is going to do some things that the burley is not, and it affects people differently. And Boris, I completely understand where you're saying there um, as everybody is going to have a preference one way or the other so one way to know Perique almost immediately is if you were tasting plums which um, I'm going to suggest to Todd that he looks for a Maduro Roma Craft. You don't have to go for the Neanderthal, but if you look for the Roma Craft that has a black band, you will taste on the cold draw, a very perique flavor. It will be obvious that it's there. I don't believe that they've actually used perique in the blending, but the flavors, <coughs> the flavors and the strength are going to be very similar to a vapor. Um, now, I've actually met the owners of Roma Craft.
that is Mr. Rosales and Mr. Martin, I believe. Uh, and I, I've lost their first names somewhere in my brain. Uh, I, but I've never been good with names, so please uh, bear with me here. Both good guys, both decided that they should start up a cigar company based in Texas. Uh, for Boris, I would suggest the Wonderlust from Roma Craft. Uh, it's, it's a mighty tasty cigar, and it's only available in Europe. In fact, uh, Germany is probably where you'll have to get it shipped from. But it's a mighty tasty cigar. Okay, not a problem there, Boris. That's uh. Actually, uh, I don't think that's a Space 1999 shirt. That is still a um, Star Wars shirt. But my wife got it for me and it was clean this morning, so... Well, okay, I'll wear it. By the way, howdy, Chad. Good to see you on. Um... Just in case anybody doesn't see me on Thursday, uh, please, again, remind yourselves that this Thursday does happen to be Thanksgiving, and I will be spending it with family. Not that y'all are not family, but um, I know what part of the family that I will be spending it with, and it's the ones that I actually live with. <laughs> And if y'all were living here, y'all would be moving out soon. Because there's just not enough places to sit down and enjoy a good pipe. Or cigar. Because right now I've got the only two outdoor seats that are comfortable. One is my tripod and the other one, well, I'm in it. Hmm. All right, so let's discuss bands. I finally got down to the point where I felt appropriate to pull the band off. For the most part, you want to leave a band on a cigar until you get pretty close to that band. In fact, the band should start loosening up on the cigar before you start trying to play with peeling it off. It's a possibility that the cellulose paste that is used to attach the band might have actually stuck to the outside wrapper and removing too early can very easily destroy the cigar making for a completely unpleasant smoke. See, I'm right there with you, Boris. Uh, though I do like Latakias, I can smoke straight Latakia and have. And people look at me like I'm crazy. But I have smoked straight Perique and enjoyed that too. I will say that you probably want a nice, comfortable chair or in Chad's situation, you want a little bit of cushion on those steps. But, um... You know, other than that, um, it's smokable. You just have to be aware that it's going to come through with a extreme amount of nicotine power. Speaking of tea, though, sometimes smoking a cigar, you will catch notes of tea which I'm catching a few 
very few. Um, and I'm not going to say it's the best tea in the world. It's it's just got. It's not a sweet tea. It's not like lemon tea or something like that. It's just it's got some tea to it. And it's starting to get dark, so I'm going to turn on a few lights real quick. But different lights today. Which should provide just enough light that y'all can see me. Alright, yeah, see, look, yep, extra light. And I'm going to move the chair so that y'all can still see me a little bit. Because <clears throat> it might get excessively dark if I don't. And I'm not uh, turning on the light behind me, which blinds the camera. So again, if you get a cigar in a tube, save the tube. It makes for a real nice way to carry around some pipe tobacco without being crazy and having to carry bags and bags and bags. You can just load up enough for, you know, a day trip or whatever in a tube and tuck it somewhere and you you know you've got your stash for the day now see I've never had ye ye old sign but now I'm wanting to because I mean I understand tea pretty well so I understand the flavors I should be uh, receiving. Now, most people, when they smoke just a straight blend, will only smoke a, vir a straight Virginia. Or a straight, uh, Cavendish. Mostly that has to do with strength or flavor. Uh, I smoked straight Perique on a bet. And I was fine with it. it for me, Perique is... Good luck finding the sign. Well, um, I'll be looking. <laughs> By the way, being that I will be, for the most part, missing Mike at Briar Blue's regular show this week, um... Just because it happens to fall on Thanksgiving. Have you gotten your VRs about Matches 860 into Mike yet? I did mine today. You can see me wearing this hat and this shirt in my backyard before it started raining. Um, and if you happen to see that video you will also see a link to the video where matches uh was describing exact or the video i reference i have included a link on that video Now, see, that's one of those things. If Peterson will bring it back, or, uh, sorry, if STC will bring it back, um, 
course, that's going to be very similar to um, somebody bringing back McClellan's. I mean, I would love to see somebody like really seriously find out if they could actually re replicate McClellan's and get it close. And not just close, but I mean like really, really close. Somebody's driving up and down the street. Nope, not trying to be nosy, just trying to make sure that if a uh, certain guy is back on the street trying to look for people to loan him a, uh, a ladder of any sort, that we go ahead and get that guy out of here permanently. Wow, have I really been on for an hour and 41 minutes? <laughs> This is how Chad feels, I'm sure. Except for he doesn't feel that way until he's like, have I really been on here for four hours? <laughs> Chad, you amaze me, brother. I don't know how in the world you do that. Boris, sell her that stuff away. Sell her that stuff away. Pretty sure Chad would agree with me. Let's see. So I'm going to be missing on Thursday. I don't know if Mike will be on or not. I hear somebody might be opening up a Zoom chat for everybody's use across Thanksgiving. Um, but I don't remember if I heard that correctly or if that was just some sort of bad dream that I went through or not really able to tell you um friday i should be back on um i might be able to pull away for an hour to just in front of chad's show so that i can tailgate for chad thanksgiving for me and my family just doesn't tend to be a hundred percent on Thanksgiving Day. We tend to turn it into a full weekend of, you know, getting together with family. And part of that's because some of the family has other family, has other family. And uh, it's just too much to try and do it all on um all on Thanksgiving, which one of our family members would literally be eating six Thanksgiving meals. And uh, that's because his extended family doesn't seem to get along with each other, so it's like, oh God, that's just too much. So we split it up some. Okay, so Mike will be on. All right, so if I can, I will touch base with y'all on Mike's show. And uh, I guess Professor Jeremiah will be having his Zoom going all day on Thursday. Uh, all right, Todd, so what will you be celebrating? Well, Boris, have you ever thought of maybe 
getting your own press together. I, I've seen plenty of people do this. Uh, the one thing I would say, if you're going to press your own tobaccos uh, from a tin down into a cake or a flake, is that you go ahead and you invest in either a wax paper, thick wax paper, which is sometimes called butcher paper, or uh, parchment paper. And that way it will, it will quite literally not stick to everything that you've done to press it. Uh, past that, all you need is a chunk of pipe and a couple of C-clamps and some metal that's cut to shape. The closer to the shape, the better. Okay, so Chad's saying parchment is best. I, I honestly, I agree with you. All right, Todd, thanks. Um, Thanksgiving and your birthday. Well, happy birthday, sir. Uh, hopefully it is very joyous. And I'm not sure that a pasta press would work for tobacco, I'm not saying that it won't. I'm just saying that uh, I haven't researched it, so I don't know. Uh, the great thing about parchment paper is that it makes sure that your whole chunk of tobacco comes out of your press without having to chip it away with a knife, which then immediately uncakes it. Uh, and it makes it so that your press is real easy to clean so that you can press some more almost immediately. Wow, I'm kind of happy I'm getting four people on an unscheduled live. <laughs> Some of the best parts about this whole community is that we are a big family and even if we don't all get along just absolutely perfectly, we still get along well enough that we can sit around for a couple of hours and chat and smoke and have a good time. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, Wednesday, should be, should be, our friend at the Pipe Nook, Mr. Eddie Gray, or uh, Professor Eddie Graybo. Okay, but... Pressing ribbon cut makes crumble cake, not plug. Many have used pasta press with success. Okay. Right. So. Okay, so a press that, uh, a pasta press basically makes the same as uh, the press that I described. Um. And personally, if I'm going to press using a pipe and two pieces of steel, I want both sides to be loose. And that press is basically going to hold it inside the pipe because as you press, it's going to create friction against the sides. Uh, if you're going to press for any extended length of time, I would definitely suggest getting a gallon Ziploc bag of some sort with a good seal and putting it all inside of that bag as it's pressing. It'll keep the moisture level 
from where you started pretty consistent all the way through and it'll keep any mold spores from being able to adhere to your should be a cake when it's done. I've seen several videos on it. I've tried it once. Uh, after trying it once, I realized that cake, while I do like the cakes, it's fine. Um, I like things already broken up so that I can just go ahead and stuff it in a pipe and get the smoking. Maybe it's just I'm lazy. Quite honestly, I've never had any plugs. Uh, the last time I tried any plug tobacco was actually a plug of chewing tobacco. And... God. I got it at a PX. I think it was shortly after hitting ground in Saudi. Uh... which was not too far from before I was just about to be out of the army entirely. Now see, that's probably one of the best ways to think about it. He, bottomless jar, I also call it the uh, catch-all jar. Uh, where all of your little leftovers end up going and waiting until you've gotten enough to smoke it or you're waiting until you've got enough to press it. And I can see I can see probably really good results that way. Uh, I don't think I would do it with the aromatics. Uh, most aromatics I find that if they've dried out in the jar they don't press quite as well um, I don't see why you couldn't smoke chewing tobacco twist uh you would definitely need to chop it up pretty fine and you might want to um, you might want to definitely make sure that it's dry enough uh, most chewing tobacco is actually a little bit wet at least in my opinion Mick McQuaid a plug you could drive nails with. I'm almost wanting to try that just because. What about jackknife? Jackknife plug. I, I mean, I've seen you sawing on that a few times, Chad. Of course, maybe it's your knife's just not quite as sharp. If if your knife's not quite as sharp, I would recommend finding one of my videos where I talk about a knife sharpening stone that you can get out of a sodium light bulb. Okay, so really, jackknife is soft compared to Mick McQuaid. Wow. <laughs> it must have a certain amount of potash in it or fly ash. <laughs> fly ash is what you get if you have burned coal and it is an ingredient that is added to uh, concrete that gives it a certain amount of hardness. I've given up most of 
chewing tobacco mostly because uh, I can never really totally get the flavor out of my mouth for a couple of days. Not to say that it can't be done, but you get that flavor in there and it just lingers and it seems to coat everything. And, well, I like kissing my wife. She doesn't much care for flavor of chewing tobacco, so, yeah. Hopefully none of y'all like kissing my wife. Speaking of that, at some point in the future, trying to discuss this with my wife, see if we can get it to happen, I asked her if she would be okay with basically an interview with me on the truth about communism. Now, Sounds kind of weird, but she was a Russian major and actually went to Russia two times. Once before the coup, when communism was in full tilt, and once after the coup, when capitalism was quickly allowing Russia to try and catch up to the rest of the world. And I've got to say, some of her statements... Uh, for those people that believe communism is a preferable thing, um, no, it's not. Uh, but she actually lived it for a few months, and no, it's nothing I ever want to experience. Now, Boris, uh, the tobacco in pouches I have had, uh, that's not too bad. Um, one of the things I do use on a somewhat regular basis is a product not for sale in California, for whatever reason, but it's called Velo, V-E-L-O. And uh, I guess it's just got a certain amount of nicotine in a crystallized form, and it's in a pouch. You just do it like you would with a can of Copenhagen or Skull. You just take one of these pouches and stick it in between your cheek and gum and go on about your day. Uh, they say you're only supposed to put it in there for about 20 minutes, but I've quite literally gone uh, three quarters of the day on the first pouch and just been like, you know, oh, yeah, well, now that I'm done doing all I needed to do, it's time to smoke. We'll toss that pouch and, you know, you weren't hurting for a shot of some nicotine the whole time. thought about sending some to Chad, but I wouldn't know whether to send mint or citrus, which citrus tastes like a sweetened tea with lemon, and mint tastes like mint. Um, I mean, they're reasonably good for just something to get you through the day without having to go outside to smoke. Which if you're in a extremely rainy location or like I was, if you go into some of these places where there's no way you're going to be able to break away for several hours and 
you're sitting there thinking, man, you know, I'd like to go get a smoke, but there's no way it's going to happen. Well, all right, Chad, it's not something you would try. Well, it's not available for you anyways in California, but um, that's the reason I thought about sending you some, because it's not available to you. I will say, I'm getting pretty close to the end of this live stream. Partly because my cigar, which has been going for the better part of two hours, is done. And partly because I know my wife's been off work for a few hours now, and uh, I don't want her really, really hacked at me. Boris, they use the word fascism here quite as liberally as they use communism. Um, communism, socialism, fascism, uh, quite honestly, they're all really closely related in uh, how they appropriate things. Not a problem, Chad. I just figured I'd give you the offer. Um, next time I'm around my place where I can get it. Of course, I haven't been up to the north side of Houston in a while where I normally get it. Because, well, the wife's not working up there right now. and That means I don't have to go up there. But it is my preferred method for when I'm driving a car because then I don't have to open up the windows or anything. I can just put a little pouch in the cheek and gum and I'm good to go. And I completely agree with Chad. Um, One of the things I've been noticing lately is it seems to be college-educated students that I guess they missed history classes. Are you out, Todd? Well, if so, I'm uh, glad you could be here. You've been here quite a while, too. And no, I'm not doing some little iTens thing like... Uh, like Martin is. So, no, typing in uh, exclamation point morons doesn't get you what it does on, on some of our favorite shows. All right, so all in all, I must say, this was actually a decent cigar. I'm not going to say it's the best cigar I've ever had. But it is starting to tar up at the end. And there it goes. <clears throat> ah, worst part about a cigar is when it starts to tar up on you. And by tar up, it just starts tasting like if you've ever been out by a road that's been freshly asphalt. That flavor that permeates everything. All right. So I've been on here two hours and five minutes. Um. had a great time with all of y'all. 
glad we could chat. Uh, if y'all are looking at how much of that cigar was actually reviewed, um, yeah, creosote. Creosote also. They're different, but they are very similar. <sighs> Being that I was an electrician, yeah, creosote's nasty. <laughs> Never want to have to climb poles again if I can avoid it. All right. So, if y'all are looking for the review on that particular cigar, uh, I will probably be releasing it on my website my blog post. Uh, make sure I type that in real quick. That is not a problem Boris I was more than happy to spend this time with y'all um, like I said y'all are like family it's one of the best parts of my day and there's that blog post website just in case anybody uh, is looking for where I've done a lot of reviews <laughs> um, you don't have to go there a lot of my reviews do end up in the uh, BRTV. Uh, speaking of which, I've also got to do a certain review on a certain tobacco for a certain blend tasting club. That'll be coming up soon also. In the meantime, y'all take care of yourselves most importantly. Of each other if you can. And it's been good seeing y'all tonight. As always, long lives, big bowls, and long ashes. And just for Chad. <laughs> Y'all take care, and I'll see you soon.